Okay, look, please stop watching that other video. It isn't good. I spent like four hours on it at most. It's full of little bits of misinformation. It's got editing errors and typos in it. It doesn't do a good job explaining the actual process. It's just not a good video. And I'm kind of unhappy with the fact that it's like super successful compared to anything else I've ever done. I literally just clickbaited the shit out of something and just so happened to get super lucky with the release window. With that in mind, this video sort of serves two purposes at once. Firstly, it's an update that uses the version of the game that the vast majority of people are going to be playing at this point. And secondly, this is kind of a make good. This is my attempt to make something better that I'm more proud of. With that in mind, can you reach level 99 in Yukiko's Castle in Persona 4 Golden? Yes, but it's going to be tedious in different ways. So the initial question to address is, what has actually changed between the Persona 4 setup and the Persona 4 Golden setup? And the answer is... really nothing, for the most part. The Kaiwan Victory Cry glitch is still available starting at level 24, and it's still first available on April 24th. So in terms of this absolutely godforsaken challenge run, the question is, what has actually changed? And the answer for the most part is just that Golden introduces five difficulties instead of three, but in actuality, they're really only three distinct difficulties, and the only differences between the middle three are changes to player damage given and player damage taken. As with before, I did this on the easiest setting available, this time being very easy instead of easy. So what actually distinguishes the five or three difficulty settings? Well, one of the great things about Persona 4 Golden over the original Persona 4 is that it allows customization of difficulty in six main categories. Firstly, there are the two stats, Damage Taken and Damage Dealt. Now, between Easy, Medium, and Hard, these are the only stats that change. On Easy, the player has a maximum of Damage Dealt and a minimum of Damage Taken, while on Normal, they're both set to a Medium setting, and on hard, they have a minimum of damage dealt and a maximum of damage taken. Where the actual variance in difficulty comes in is in the other stats available to change. Firstly and least importantly is whether or not the player is able to retry battles from the start of the battle or from the start of the floor they are on when they are down in combat. On very hard, the player has to reload a save, like in all of the difficulties in the original Persona 4. While on very easy, the player can restart from the start of any battle they fail. Meaning if a boss knocks you out, you restart from the beginning of that boss fight. On easy, normal, and hard, however, the player doesn't restart from the start of the fight, but they can restart that floor that they were on when they were knocked out. So if you were knocked out during a boss fight, you resume at the start of the boss fight floor. The second two and two far more important difficulty changes are XP earned from battles and Yen earned from battles, Yen being the money. On very easy, the player receives what I estimate to be around a 1.5 times multiplier to both XP and Yen earned from every battle, while from what I can best tell on very hard, it's a times 0.5, so you're receiving a roughly half. This is why I don't recommend anyone, even the most masochistic of people, play Persona 4 Golden on very hard. It's not a good challenge, and Persona 4 Original on Hard was not necessarily a good challenge either, but Persona 4 Golden on Hard is an incredibly, incredibly tedious challenge, on top of just being a hard game. For every hour that you spend grinding in Easy, Normal, or Hard in Persona 4 Golden, expect to spend four hours to get the equivalent results grinding in Very Hard. It is just not worth it. Even if you're not doing a challenge like this and you're just playing the game normally, don't touch very hard. Now luckily you can customize your difficulty, which if you're going to do that, I would recommend you play my personal hard plus difficulty, which is basically just Persona 4 hard mode. I really don't understand why Golden's very hard is the way it is, other than, I mean, it says it's for people who like to hurt themselves. So go hog wild if that's your sort of thing. Playing on very easy, I was able to get my character from level 10 to level 24 in roughly an hour. If you get really lucky with the new shuffle time mechanic, you could probably get it a lot faster. I didn't. So when you're getting ready to fuse your Kaiwan, you can choose to do it how I described as the stupid way before, 
which is to raw fuse an Ukobok and a Ghoul to get a Kaiwan, and then hope that you get the, at best, 1 in 3 chance to have a chance to get Tetrakarn to change into Victory Cry. Let's talk for a minute about why this is the stupid way and why you shouldn't do it. If you don't level up Ghoul or Ukobok at all before fusing, you will make a Kaiwan with Tetrakarn, Cellbreaker, and Mamudo. When the game considers these skills for skill change, as far as is known, they're considered at a complete neutral, meaning you have a 33.3 chance that Tetrakarn is chosen for change. In 4 Vanilla, there were 23 rank 7 skills, meaning that you had a 1 3rd chance of having a 1 in 23 chance. Now, I am very, very bad at math, but by my numbers, that equals out to 1 in 69 chance. Nice, but not great. Assuming that you'll only need to fuse 69 times is some of that good old-fashioned gambler's flacky. So here's the alternative way, which I did a very bad job at explaining in my old video and which should hopefully save you some time if you execute it correctly. Start by getting Ukomok, Ghoul, and Pixie as drops during shuffle time. Unfortunately, you're completely at the mercy of RNGs for these, and it could take a while if you're particularly unlucky. Pixie appears on floors 1 to 5, Ghoul appears on floor 7, and then Ukobok appears on floors 1 to 4, but people claim he can also appear on 7. I have yet to see it happen, but who am I to question the wiki? Once you have your ingredients, and hopefully some backup money, you start by fusing Ukobok and Ghoul into Kaiwan. Your goal is for Tetrakarn to change. It doesn't matter what Tetrakarn changes into, though if you got Victory Cry on your first try, then that would be pretty fucking neato. When you get Tetrakarn to change, fuse an Oberon out of Pixie and Ghoul, then fuse Oberon and Kaiwan into Matador. When you do, make certain to pass on the changed Tetrakarn skill. We'll call him David. At this point, you should save your game, because this next step can be an absolute bastard. You want to fuse Matador with another Ghoul to make McCoy. What you need to happen is you need to pass on David, then have it change again, but not back into Tetrakarn. If another skill gets changed, or if it changes back into Tetrakarn, reload your save and try again. Now, fuse your McCoy with a new Pixie to make a new Oberon that inherits David again. Save after you do this, because now you need to fuse Oberon and a new Kaiwan to make another Matador. If you've done this right, you will now have a Matador with two rank 7 skills that aren't Tetrakarn. If you fuse this Matador with an Ukobok, you will create a Kaiwan with five skills, three of which are rank 7 and can become Victory Cry. This increases your odds from a 1 in 69 chance to a generously rounded 3 in 115 chance. Now, if you're like me and failed a lot of math classes, that may not seem much better, but you'll have to trust me on this one, it's more than twice as likely. Luck can still absolutely screw you, but I got it doing this myself in roughly an hour. Compared to doing it the stupid way in Persona 4 Vanilla, which was probably closer to two or three hours. I think it was around that point where I realized one of life's great joys is in having a room full of <laughs> So, you have your Victory Cry Kaiwan, and now you can fuse and refuse this Kaiwan into anything and everything you want until you eventually have a compendium full of Victory Cry personas. You want Victory Cry Izanagi? You got it! Victory Cry Slime? It's yours, my friend. Now all you have left to do is the grinding itself. I mentioned previously that on Very Easy, the player receives a 1.5 times modifier to XP gained. However, you will still reach the point where you begin to receive 1 XP for every battle. If you're very lucky, you can get a few XP up Arcanas to make some battles give a whole 3 XP. But at this point, you're locked into what's probably several hundred, if not thousand hours of grinding. Your bud Tevin, who I shamelessly stole the idea of the first video from, has been slowly going insane, attempting to do this same thing but in Persona 5, so I don't recommend it. At the end of my first video, I said that I would be doing it on my Twitch. How has that gone? Uh, it hasn't. I hate to disappoint you, but it's not happening. It's not interesting to make, and it's not interesting to watch. If you want to see it happen, by all means, do it for yourself and shine on, you crazy diamond. I suppose I don't really have anything interesting to end with, so I'll address a comment from the first video and tell you a little about where this channel is going. Somebody in the comments pointed out that it's technically incorrect to call the Kaiwan Victory Cry glitch a glitch, since it is an intended mechanic. 
While I agree that it isn't a glitch in the same way that a wrong warp or item duplication is, it's important to understand that glitch is an inherently semantic term. While it's using an intended mechanic, it's producing an unintended result for a result that is almost inarguably detrimental to the intended experience of the game. This is not me putting this commenter on blast, I 100% agree with them, but it is a purely semantic issue, and most people will call it a glitch. Other than that, not really anything worth responding to from that comment section. Most people just commented the word underrated and then a precedingly higher number, which was, uh, odd. I think I'm going to be making more personal self-content for a while with this channel. Uh, the fan compilations won't be going anywhere for the time being, but if I start taking this whole YouTube thing seriously, maybe I'll put them up on another channel. Or if someone asks me to relocate them. For now, I'm kind of just throwing shit at a wall and doing whatever I want, so... You know, be on the lookout. For the time being, I'm working on an editing project for somebody else, and uh, I occasionally do play games on Twitch. Maybe it'll be Persona 4. Not the 99th thing, but Persona 4. Do you want that? I don't have any for this, so it's over now. Bye!